Hello, hello, everybody. We are now live. Let's get some people in this live today. Join the live. Come on. It's your boy, Paul P. Live and direct. Hopefully I'm in the right one. Sometimes I go into the wrong, on the wrong live because I got like four Instagram accounts. <laughs> oh, man. But we are live and direct. So, everybody, today, okay, he should be coming in soon. Today, we are going to be doing a live interview with Mr. Kyle Williams, who played Detective Michaels. So, as soon as he get up in here, we're going to get this live going. This should be a fun one. Um, uh, Kyle is a, an, an amazing actor, very amazing actor. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, um... I don't think too many people could have pulled off Detective Oh, here you go right now. I don't think too many people could have pulled it off, but he did. And we have right now. Let me see. Did I do it right? Let me see. It's connecting. My What's man, up? Kyle. How what you up? Doing, man? doing great, man. Doing great. Good. Hey, hey you, look, hey, you looking sharp as always, man. I got all dressed up for you, man, you know. <laughs> Try to look my best. I see you. I see you, man. How, how's everything going for you right now? I'm kicking it, man. You know, I've been staying at the crib here for a long time, man. Um, don't really leave the house that much. Uh, just okay. been eating good, yeah, smoking yeah. good. Uh, been working <laughs> out. Uh, eating a little uh, filet, filet mignon? Uh, always, man. Uh, well, I eat vegan, you know, that vegan uh, filet, you know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see what you said. Hey, I try. Hey, I tried vegan for like a month. I felt really good, but man, that was hard. That was hard. If yeah. I miss anything, it's usually, I, I miss like bacon, bro. I miss yeah. bacon. bacon. I miss yeah. uh, pepperoni. Hey, hey, you can't, you can't deny it, man. You can't deny the bacon. <laughs> Try to stay away from that swine, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Kyle, man, for people who probably don't know uh, too much about you besides the character, just let people know a little bit about who Kyle Williams is, man. Give them a little background on yourself. All right, yeah. I live in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, been out here for about 15 years. I'm uh, originally from Texas, South Texas, uh, one of them Texas boys. And I've been out here... Um, Actor, full-time, uh, it's, it's what I do, you know. Uh, I saw the new City episode um, okay, recently. Okay. Killer, man. Killer, and, um, right? Right? Man, I, Kyle, I promise, man, like, and, and that's what we're working on, the next step, steps of it and everything, but this is a show that I tell people, like, everybody got to see because it's not just a great show, but it's educational. You can learn a lot, you know, when it comes down to the city. People come from L – people come to L.A., and they just go to Hollywood, they think that's what it's about, you know? Or they go to Beverly Hills, but they don't know what's really going on in the inner city. And I think that all of you guys, man, display, you know, what, what it could be like living in those areas, man. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you saw it, you know? And uh, yeah, man, we're just gonna keep going. So let, let everybody know a little bit about Detective Michaels, the character you play, you know? Uh, t tell the people about who Detective Michaels is. Uh, detective Michael, uh, you know, the uh, lead detective, he's, um, he gets called in, you know, Ms. Davis gives him a ring, you know, has some drugs, called me in and I came, came in and started taking over the situation. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, you know, Michaels don't really uh, give two shits about nothing, you know, I think he's, you know, desensitized to just about everything. He's desensitized to race. He's desensitized yeah. to pain. And he's been in, he's been, you know, detective in LA for so long, you know, it takes nothing really sways him, you know, and, exactly. Uh, exactly. He, he come in, he don't really have much, you know, feelings for, you know, how other people think, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Or how they perceive him, you know, he'd be saying stuff that, you know, is way out of line and split. I mean, yeah. to him, it's just another day. Yeah, yeah. And he, and you and you know the crazy, and you know the crazy thing, Kyle. Detective Michaels, what people I don't know if people get it or not, but it's almost like a mystery because he come off the way that he do, but I think it's gonna be a lot that show later on that he may not be exactly what you may think he is because of his past. 
You get what I'm saying? So I remember you. Uh, watching, like, man, this guy is a dick. You know what I'm saying? You know? But but one thing I also noticed is people be like, man, but I like him, though. <laughs> what know? was that last part? Yeah, but people be like, you know what? But I like him, though. You know? A lot of people be yeah. like, man, the guy who played Detective Michaels, man, he really coming through. He he can act. Yeah, he really cut. Man, I feel it when he acts. You get what I'm saying? It's yeah. like that hot villain, you know. He's just he's a villain, you know. He's a terrible person, yeah, but you yeah. just can't look away. Yeah. <laughs> you with me. So so Kyle. Yeah yeah I'm right here. You see me? Okay. Yeah. So Kyle, uh, I don't know if you remember, but let's let's just start from the beginning. When you came out in audition for Detective Michaels, I think I went through forty. Detective Michaels, like before you came in, like forty of them, like really, yes, yes, forty different. Ones. I was like, man, what I was looking for, I was like, I don't think it's, this is going to be difficult because I see a lot of good people who can maybe play a role as a detective or you know as a, as, but I needed that character. I needed somebody who had the character that could really like bring the energy and, and really bring that persona that people really have not seen before, you know, to the table. So. I don't know if you remember, but when you came in, you were suited up, you know, suited. And you killed it. You know, like, I'm talking about, like, from the first word to the last word, you was on point. I, I, what I want to know is how did you come in so prepared for that role? Like, that's one thing I always want to ask you myself. How was you so prepared? Ah, uh, you know, I, when I remember coming in, um, I think we had about a half an hour before I came in to see you, you know, so I just prepare my lines. I got a couple of exercises I like to do because when I come in an audition, I don't like to, you know, be on the papers. You know, I like to I like to have it in my head and, and try to stay away from the papers. Um, I got a lot of friends uh, that are actors and they, they'd be sticking to the papers, you know. I mean, yeah. it was the first time we ever seen each other. And, um, yeah, yeah. You had no paper. Like, let me let yeah. everybody know. Kyle came in with no paper, nothing. <laughs> Suited up. I promise I thought that I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I got I this. I got this. Hey, hey, I think somebody walked in and said, hey, Paul, man, uh, I think somebody out there for us. But I'm like, what's going on? I, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, from that day, you know, I, I'm really confident in what I do when I try to, you know, convey that whenever I come in and read for people. And, um, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I just really felt it, you know, uh, I felt really confident about the, the copy and stuff like that and the character. Um, yeah. Seemed like a CD character. So I was playing that villain up. Uh, yeah, it's been yeah. a great experience. You know, it's been about two years now. Right. I mean, this uh, whole experience. It's, it's been about. It, it'll, it'll be two years going into, like, June, July. So almost, you know, it, it really haven't, we've been, like, kind of rolling, so it really don't even feel like it's been that long, you know? But, mm -hmm. yeah, it, 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 it almost been about two years since we first started. Definitely, yeah. But uh, I remember the first rehearsals, too, you know, came in, and we're all reading our scenes, and we got all the uh, executive producers there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, we're going up and performing for everybody. And I just, uh, I remember uh, just wanting to put it on, you know, like yeah. um, reading the copy, you know, the <laughs> stuff that I got to say. I'm the only, you know, white person in, in the whole place. You know, you got 50 uh -huh. people in there yeah. and I'm having to drop in bombs and in yeah. words. And hey, I promise, whenever, <laughs> whenever your scenes would come up, total silence. <laughs> total silence. And me, hey, you know what I would, you know what I would be doing in the background? I'll be back getting goosebumps, just smiling like, oh <laughs> man, he got his ear about to surprise everybody up in here because you brought it too. You brought it. It wasn't just about the words that were on the paper and the lines. You brought that energy, and people can't do nothing but respect that. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. So when it comes down to Detective Michaels, tell tell us like. What did you like most about playing Detective Michaels? Now, playing Detective Michaels is, uh, I love playing villain roles. You know, I feel like I got one of the funnest roles uh, in the whole production. You know, I'm, I'm mouthy. Yeah. You know, 
I, I got this, uh, you know, a lot of action in my stuff and, uh, you know, I can have fun with it where a lot of this, uh, you know, content from the city is pain, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's, you know, people having to deal with real life struggles and whatnot. And it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's heavy. Yeah. And, and then here I, I come in and, you know, I'm just kind of, you know, spitting in the face of all that drama. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Michael's, it's just been an ex an incredible experience, you know, from the premiere at the Chinese theater, uh, you know, yeah. it's just, it's been a, a great experience playing Michael's. Uh, yeah. I, I really work hard on the copy at home because I wanted to bring it, you know, uh, you I did. knew that uh, I knew after, uh, you know, the Chinese theater that we was dealing with something big. It's, something it's, it's a great episodic. Something real. And, uh, Definitely. You know, um, and so. I wanted yeah. to bring that A game all the way. You brought and you brought it definitely. You brought it. I mean, another thing that I want to say when it comes down to this show. I mean, it's it's no mystery. It's no secret that this is an urban, may, mainly an urban like show. You know, um, the majority of the characters, and like you say, when you up in the room, the majority of the people in the room are black. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. when you saying those lines, you know, and you going through it, and we know it's acting, and you bringing it. At any point, do you ever feel uncomfortable, or how you feel, like when you come? Nah, man. Nah, man. I'm just light skinned and big boned, bro. You know, <laughs> I'm with my peoples. You know, uh, all my friends are, you know, are, are black. You know, most yeah. of the opportunities that I've had in the acting world is yeah. from all black productions. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all my brothers and sisters out there, God bless you. You know. Um, I just feel like I, I I relate to uh to people, you know. I, yeah. I grew up playing basketball and, and most of the ballers that I was with is they was black and uh yeah. we, you know, yeah. create bonds on the court, you know, and um Yeah. Yeah, I never really felt uncomfortable. You know, maybe that first rehearsal. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not the type of guy that really likes to drop, you know, N bombs and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Even though even though I got friends that be be calling me that all the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, like uh, Hispanic brothers calling me Holmes or Essay, you know, yeah, yeah, it feels, yeah, it feels yeah. kind of good, but yeah. I ain't about to start talking like that. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, you know, people look at Michaels and they might think that, you know, he's a, uh, it's a, you know, oh, their cops don't talk like that. They wouldn't just come out and say something like that. Yeah. And I got to say, they do. I think they do, you know. Um, uh, I mean, and Kyle. And that's why I have so much respect for you when you came out and did your job because you always came with it. You was fearless. And you understood like, hey, this is acting. This ain't who I am. This is acting. And a person that has written this show, I needed people who could be fearless because these are things that I really grew up around. And even though I don't condone it, I needed somebody who was fearless like you that could step into that character and come across to everybody when they watching it as, wow, this is really going on? Because I had, when I had another show, you remember the other showing that I had um, that was in North Hollywood? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got so many questions there where people asking like, is this really what goes on in, in those neighborhoods? And I'm like, sad to say, but yeah, this is really how it is, you know? So I really respect and, and thank you for really coming across and showing that character in a way that I needed everybody to see it. You get what I'm saying? Cops, detectives out here, I mean, we're in a city of, you know, 10, 20 million people, all the surrounding areas. Yeah. I just yeah. feel like, you know, look at uh, that whole Lee Baca situation. That was, we're, we're not that far away from, I mean, that's the chief of police. And I was going to ask you about that, because that's, that's one of those lines you threw in. And, and uh -huh. you know, I always tell all of you, hey, if you feel something, let it out. You know I'm I'm free when it come down to the to the, you guys acting. I want you guys to feel comfortable. If you feel a line here and here, say it. So that was one of the lines I never asked you about. But where did you get? I know what it's from. But where did you get that Libaka line from? Ah, that's a great question. You know the things that pop into my head sometimes. You know, just working on the copy up here at the crib. Uh, I don't know. It just came out. You know, me and McKay is kind of going at it. Yeah, yeah, and. I just wanted to, uh, you know, I was all, I, I was, I couldn't believe when I heard that Lee Baca was going to jail for corruption. Yes, yes. Corruption and you got, with the LAPD. 
And you got to think, you know, if that's the top dog. Who knows all the sorts of stuff that's going on from prisons to the streets and whatnot. Yeah. But I'm too pretty to go to jail. I, my, <laughs> Michael's better watch his ass, you know. Could, <laughs> and, hey, hey, when you said that, hey, you got to see what happened in the future. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, I remember when we first started talking, it was like we started talking about Michaels and it was like, we don't know what's going to happen. This dude might die a horrible death yeah, yeah, or this dude, yeah. this dude might, you know, take it all the way to the top, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, what we'll, we'll give you that. I mean, because to me, it's a gift. I see it as a gift. We'll give you that gift to absolutely act. Feel no pressure of playing a detective who got issues, you know, rather that. Um, um, racial issues, rather that's um, abuse issues, no matter what it is, what give you, the, where do you get that gift to like come out and act and, and play a character of a detective in a hood with majority, you know, uh, uh, a community of black people? What give you a gift like that to, to, to act like that? Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of practice, shit don't come easy, you know, you, you got to work it, you got to work at it hard, you know, um, I, you know, a lot of the places I've been living, uh, when I lived in New York City, I lived in uh, Harlem. Yeah, you know, okay. I, I, lived in a, I lived in a lot of black neighborhoods. I play a lot of basketball and ball leagues and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I have to say just working, working on my craft. Uh, I feel real seasoned. I'm going, I'm working and going on auditions all the time. So I, I, I stay kind of, you know, seasoned with the copy. Yeah. Whether I'm playing a detective, whether I'm playing a cop, I, I do get a lot of detective uh, opportunities, cop roles and nice. stuff like that. Nice, nice. So you and, actually uh, lived in Harlem before? Yeah, 152 in Amsterdam. Shout out. <laughs> uptown. I'm an uptowner, bro. <laughs> so, I like that uptown. So, so for one, you wouldn't be able to tell whether you have or you not, but have you ever been in this in the in a more of the the urban cities like like South Central Compton have you ever been in those areas as well yeah I got a few friends that live down in South Central I, I've gone down there I've worked a few jobs down in Compton um I was trying to play in, in a basketball league down there for a minute okay. um and um yeah yeah I got um I got some friends down there I live in downtown right now um yeah, yeah, yeah. before that I was up in the valley Okay. Uh, you got you got plenty of brothers up in uh, the no ho up yeah. in Van Nuys yeah. and all that. Hey, you know, I mean, um, one, one thing one thing I can say is that you have a comfortability when it comes down to the to the you know the black culture and things like that. I've noticed that from the beginning. I didn't. I had people that came into the audition that would play a role like uh, audition for like Sergeant McKay or maybe another role and say, you know what, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable saying this. I don't feel comfortable saying that. You always felt a certain comfort, you know, with like, um, not in a disrespectful way, but in a way where, you know what, this is what I do. And, you know, I've been around this culture a lot that as long as I do it the right way and I'm respectful, you know, I'm not going to get that type of negative energy. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Try to uh what can I say, man? I'm just light skinned, you know. I, I did that ancestry.com, Paul, and I'm like, uh, I was three percent. Came back, I was uh, three percent African American. So uh, that's what I'm talking I'll be out. about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess it just shines out of me, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in episode three, for people who have not saw episode three yet, for one, go see it right now. You could go and catch the city. Episode one, two, and three on paulplikeaproductions.com. Do not miss it. It's great. We have another episode coming soon, so go and catch up. But when it comes down to episode three, that's when Sergeant McKay come in. That's almost like your rival. You get what I'm saying? I'm, good. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah. When I see you and Sergeant McKay go at it, it looked like some real beef. Some real beef. W one thing that I want to know is, like, how did y'all – come across and make it look so real? Did y'all have like extra rehearsals or something, man? Like how, how did y'all come across and make it look the way y'all did? You know, Tom, uh, McKay, you know, Tommy just brought it. You know, we had uh, Tony, JC, Christo up in the house as well. And, um, you know, we just came in and did our thing. You know, the scene before, we had some scenes before with, uh, and I was watching um, 
McKay talk with Smitty. Okay. Or, or Schmitty, or I should Schmitty. say Schmitty. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. I was watching them, and it just felt real raw. It felt like it was heavy drama. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, for me to just waltz in and try to take over, you know, his crime scene was kind of, a, you know, an asshole move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and and it's, he, a, and it's a lot of things that people are going to see when it comes down to the relationship between you and the sergeant, you know? Um um, scenes that we've already did that people don't haven't seen yet, and yeah. scenes in the future. But that that relationship is like a battle; it's a tug of war. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Absolutely. You know? But and y'all bring it, so I got a lot of respect for that. What What would you say? You got like a hundred scenes, right? Like, and I love them all. You got a lot of great scenes. What would you see? Say is like your favorite scene that you've done so far? Well, I got uh, episode three. Um, man. Those uh, those two scenes with one with me with McKay and with Diamond, um, I'd be I really be feeling those episode threes. N not to say that ep uh, the the scene with with uh, Miss Davis in episode one and two, mm -hmm. and then uh, the inter at the interrogation with Diamond. Th those are good scenes as well. And um, yeah, yeah. But I, I'd have to say uh, this episode three just knocked my socks off. You know, the the whole episode all the way through it was just. Uh, I mean, I was my eyes was just glued to the screen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how did how, going to episode three? You have the scene with you and Diamond mm -hmm. know, in in the car. You know, uh, I don't people who haven't seen it yet. Like I said, go watch it. But people who have seen it, they may say this detective is a real slime ball. What what did, what did you feel before, like really becoming one with that scene and acting that scene out? What was like the feeling that came across from you? Well, you know, I'm trying to get Diamond's attention, you know. She doesn't doesn't seem like, you know, I'm like she's taking it real seriously what I'm trying to get her to do and it, and it's for me it, it, it's about as serious as it gets. Yeah. And I'm trying to let her see, you know, I'm trying to convey that to her and sh snap out of it, Diamond. Yeah. Snap out of it, you yeah. know, and um but at the same time, you know, it seems like with Michaels, it's all about power and control. He he mm -hmm. wants to have the power. He wants to have the control. And you can see it written all over his face, you know, how yeah. he, he really loves. He, he just feeds off, of, you know, having that power. Yeah. And you know, yeah. So I wanted to let Diamond know, like, you got to come in here and, and find out who I, I you need to find out the information that I need you to find out. Exactly. And if you don't, because if you don't, I'm going to make you pay for it. I'm going to make you pay because, exactly. you know, I got to find out what I got to find out. I got to find this drug dealer. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, and you I, came I with it. You came with it. Like, you know, when you start, <laughs> even like you you had, you had saw you had to get her attention. So when I saw you kind of like go for it, like and make her feel like, you know, oh, you know, when you started to touch on her and things like oh, that, I'm like, God. okay, he's really coming across as Detective Michaels is the true dick. <laughs> you you know really helped with it. You really helped that too. You know, I remember when we was going into the scene and you said, Hey, I, I want you to really do something that's gonna, you know, that that that's gonna be, you know, big. I don't want you uh, you know, don't lighten it, bring it heavy, come bring it. come correct, come hard. And so yeah, you know, when at the end of it, you know, when I'm kinda, you know, doing my thing with diamond, uh it feels like you can feel it when you're watching it. It just feels so bad, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong. Like, who the hell does this guy think he is, yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I was watching it uh, with my girlfriend, right? And when that scene come on, she was like, oh, my God. Oh my. <laughs> What's going on? Because, because you know why, though? Because in, in, in past uh, episodes, Detective Michaels, he came off as a jerk, but not as a as a slime ball. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. On this episode, you brought Detective Michaels to a whole nother level. And I know you made everybody, especially women, feel like, oh, this dude is very disrespectful. Like this kid, Detective Michaels. Make skin crawl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you did an absolutely good job, man. Um, and, yeah. and you know what? Uh, we're setting up Diamond, you know, to go in and get this information for me, you know, and uh, she's all, she doesn't seem so, you know, she doesn't seem too confident about what she's got to go do. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, 
I'm trying to, you know, let her know that this is not, you know, time to start, you know, you got to come in there and find out this it's stuff serious. for me. It's yeah. serious. It's real. Yeah. Yeah. And that's setting Diamond up, you know, for these upcoming episodes, you know, yeah, it's exactly. her, her character. It's going to make her character shine, you know, and uh, I thought she really shined in that scene, too. You know, so yeah. me, me sitting there talking to her and just to see her close up face of just fear and confusion yeah. and just like. She, she, there's nothing, and she wants to get out of it, but there's nothing that she can do to get out of it. You know, exactly. she's got, she's got to do it. And yeah, you think about all the, it makes me think about, you know, in real life, you know, people getting forced to, to, to into positions that it's a lose, lose, whatever they do, but exactly, exactly. They got the lesser of two evils is, is to go and, you know, try to find out this info. So get this detective off my back. Exactly, exactly. And and shout out to Rita Rucker, who plays the role Rita. as Diamond. You know, she's an amazing actor. Um, she did a great job. So, you know, shout out to her again. Um, she did great. Um, Check her out in episode two as well. Yeah. She killed it, man. Yeah, she yeah. she really brought it. When I had her go spit that gum out, you know, <laughs> I, had to take, I had to take a little look at them curves. But... Uh, <laughs> What a great scene. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. She's said, awesome. You, said you, to, you said you have to do what? I had to check out those curves, and she walks by to spit the gum out, and I'm just like, hey, hey, okay, all right. I see you, Diamond. <laughs> yeah, Marie- hey, y'all have great chemistry. You yeah. and Rita, y'all have amazing chemistry, man. I, I think y'all did amazing, you know, so, yeah. Rita, we, we practiced the scene a few times, and, you know, she she's – um very generous as an actor you know she's letting me play and find certain things that uh, you know will make make the scene even that much better and exactly. and I, th- I think we did i think we killed it oh killed it amazing job amazing job you know um, i love the music too man like the co- the music compositions is just unbelievable i um, appreciate it appreciate it man appreciate thank you it. thank yeah, you yeah you know what when it comes down to the music <clears throat> it's something that i never really thought about because I don't know if, if if you know or other people know, but I was actually an artist before, you know. I started getting more into the the the, the film industry and stuff like that. So I've had I have hundreds and hundreds of songs. Those are all your beats, huh? All, all my music, all my music. Nice. Yeah. So just doing placement for it, I'm like, okay, this for me is the easy part. But just hearing, you know, so many people say, hey man, the music is really great. You know, it's it's just it's just a a, a pleasure, and and you know, I'm just thankful, you know. That people feel Maybe like we that should get in the studio, man. I got some bars. I got some you got bars. Some bar? Give me <laughs> a couple of bars. All right. Let the good Lord God bless me. Let uh-huh. the wind that blows caress me. Uh-huh. Let the laws of nature arrest me. Uh-huh. Hey, remember me like Elvis Presley. It's going to uh-huh. be a blue Christmas without me. Uh-huh. And I am certain that you will doubt me, uh-huh. even though you know nothing about me. The shadow of darkness surrounds me, and though I try to walk around proudly, Uh. the forecast continues to be cloudy. Uh. The powers that be won't allow me. Uh. She's so hot, but the sex is so lousy. (laughs) Eat the good meat and throw away the carcass. Close Uh. the lid. All that's left is darkness. Uh. There's no time to waste, and I ain't getting no help. So if I want to get it done, I got to do it myself. Myself. Cause I believe in myself. I don't need nobody else. I can do it on my own. I don't need nobody's help. Dark uh. nights up in this city, underground and overseas. Uh. But when I look into this phone, best believe it, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, hey, you are on the next soundtrack for the soundtrack. <laughs> we got Michaels. Coming yeah. to the soundtrack of the Detective day. Michael's dropping bars. <laughs> dope, dope. <laughs> hey, man, that was amazing, man. Hey, I know everybody. Every, hey, you can't do nothing but love that right there, man. That's, I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> I didn't know you had bars. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so going back to uh, some of the questions. When it comes down to like the LA lifestyle in the urban communities and neighborhoods and the hoods, did did you learn something new about playing Detective Michaels, or is this something that you like feel differently when it comes down to those neighborhoods? Um, you know, learning something new, it feels like you know, 
when you're in these when you're in these neighborhoods, people is getting you know messed with for 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 dumb shit. You know, um, people is getting you know catching cases for absolutely nothing. And then you you know you go up to like a Malibu, uh-huh. or you know a Beverly Hills, and you know people be doing the same stuff, and, and nobody gives them no problems. Um, uh-huh. I don't. I don't know if I learned anything new per se, but um, you know, I, I got a little bit of a street mentality. Um, a lot of the you know cats that I kick it with, you know, they'd be living in those hoods like that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm not really going to Malibu or Beverly Hills and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I feel like you know in L.A., especially with the PDs, it's more of a um, a reactive. You know, I feel like. A lot of times, you know, you're not going to get pulled over for speeding in L.A. You know, I mean, the traffic's bad anyway, so you're not really getting to speed. But, you know, these cops out here, they, they got more stuff to do than to worry about small shit. Yeah. But then you go into these these poor neighborhoods, maybe ethnic neighborhoods, and they're busting their balls for dumb shit, you know, just for whatever reason, you know. And I don't understand why you would want to go to the poor neighborhoods and put people on blast, you know, for minor offenses yeah. that they can't even, they can't even afford to begin with. And then, I mean, if, and if you did that in, in these white collar neighborhoods, like a Beverly Hills or a Malibu, I mean, that, that, that'd generate way more revenue yeah. Than, yeah. than going to a poor neighborhood and, you know, giving people shit for, you know, class C misdemeanors, you know, whether they, you know, smoking a joint or smoking a blunt on, on the corner, you know, or, uh, uh-huh. Or jaywalking, or, or whatever, you know. Drive, uh, you know. There's a lot of bikes. People be riding bikes the wrong way and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, being in downtown is a lot of homeless. It's more of like a home. I mean, it's a. It's not necessarily a. There's no. There's no separation of wealth in downtown. You know. Yeah. You, yeah. you got I people mean, paying three or four grand for an apartment, and then you know they come outside and there's a tent. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I think it was so important to really have a show like this. Because the things that you're saying are things that a lot of people who don't know about these urban communities out here in Los Angeles have no idea. I mean, I know you face it anywhere in a lot of like states yeah. when it comes down to um, these yeah, certain true. things. But I know in LA, you know, we dealt with the riots. You know, when it comes down to the mm-hmm. LAPD, we battle and have, it's almost like it's a war in those neighborhoods when it comes down to that, you know? I'll never forget when I was in the fifth grade, I had to stop going to school for a month because the riots broke out and we were scared to just go out of our house because you had, after the riots, you had the LAPD on every block. It was a lot of fights going on. It was almost like a a war. You get what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. I want people to see these things and I want people to understand that the things that you may not understand and know, we are gonna give it to you guys. And then maybe that will create some type of understanding and change and knowing when it comes down to the black community, people who come from these places, what what we may be thinking, what we may be feeling. Understand that it's a lot of negativity that we go through to even get to a place that now we're able to communicate and have a job that, that may be normal for you or, or, or be amongst, you know, the neighborhoods in Beverly Hills or, or, or Hollywood or Brentwood you know, um, coming out of places like that, how difficult it is because of the things that you have to go through just to get out of your own neighborhood. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just wanted to express that a little bit more. And and one thing I appreciate you when it comes down to it is I really feel you get it and you understand it, you know? So so, uh, appreciate you for really like coming across and showing what it is to be a detective or a police in the urban neighborhood, you know? So. How was that, man? That must have been, you know, crazy, you know, having a, you know, fifth grade, you, you're, you're such a youngster, uh-huh. you're seeing all this violence, you know, uh, people getting killed out in the middle of the street. Um, how, tell me more about that, you know, is it, were, were you down there in them streets and you just said, you said they had to stay home? Well, yeah, we had to not, we wasn't able to go to school for like a month. I mean, I lived in South Central, so I'm right off of Central, where like, this is where like the heart of it is going on. So just to get to school or come back from school, this is why everything was shut down. You driving past buildings and, and businesses that are on fire, you know, and, and things like that. People are burning them up. You got, you could, you could see LAPD officers just drive halfway running into people, just trying to stop the chaos. 
Um, you know, it, it ain't no taking nobody to jail. It's lot. It, you, it's fights. You see live fights. Do you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, as a, as a kid, you know, um, we didn't come out much during that. But when you did, you you see certain things that it's like, this isn't normal. But if it, it you felt the reality of it though, you know, we you know it wasn't normal, but it's like it is what it is. You know, you get what I'm saying. So it, it's something that I really felt like. This is something that people need to know because others don't know that was that's what was going on. You just see the news, but you ain't seeing what's actually going on in the neighborhood. You Why they're saying? doing it? Yeah, exactly. they're just not are not out there doing that for nothing. It's they're they're yeah. not just running amok. I mean, it just boiled over. You you, you hear about all the racial injustices and, and whatnot, and yeah. um, yeah. But I've watched a few docs about uh, you know the Watts riots and stuff like that. Uh, real heavy shit. Real yeah, deep. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to understand, a person who became a writer like me, like, it's hard to to just write other things when I know it's things just where I came from alone, people need to know about, people need to hear, people need to see, you know? So I tell everybody all the time, I'm not trying to exploit gangs or negativity when I do a show like The City. Not at all. What I want people to do is see what was our reality. You get what I'm saying? This was yeah. our reality. I'm sorry it looked the way it looked. I'm sorry it looked negative. I'm sorry that, you know, it looked crazy seeing the gangs and, and the detectives walking around saying things like they are, but this was my reality. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I got to show everybody, because maybe if I show the reality that I grew up with and how crazy it was, maybe that would make others think differently. You get mm. what I'm saying? Especially it's if like they understand this. Fiction is based on nonfiction. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So... So yeah, but um, taking a step back a little bit, Kyle. So we're getting deep. We're getting deep, bro. You know, we get it too deep for him right now, man. We gonna take a step back. Talk <laughs> might be too true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so okay, so I got one for you, Kyle. All right. First and foremost, I don't think nobody could pull off Detective Michaels like you. First and foremost, okay. But if you had to pick a celebrity to play Detective Michaels, who would you pick and why? Oh, you know, uh, I love me some Joseph Sikora. Uh, he plays uh, Tommy Egan on Power. Uh, real good actor is a guy that I I uh, like to watch and, you know, uh, work off of. Uh, maybe like a Michael Shannon or something like that. Um, okay. I could see, you know, uh, those two actors being really good for Detective Michaels. There's two actors that... Uh, they they do get a lot of villain roles, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I could totally see you know uh, Joseph Sakura being okay. uh, a detective Michaels, yeah, for sure. Okay. Is Joseph Sakura better actor than you, Kyle? Hey, you know I, I feel like we's equals. Okay. I'm like okay. I'm like Joseph Sakura on steroids. I'm the real Tommy <laughs> Egan. I don't know for all those power people. If anybody watches Power, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, let's go start up something. Me and Torian was doing an interview, and we brought up... Uh, yeah, I saw it. You saw it? The show yeah. All-American. I was like, okay, let's take a step. We don't, we don't want to step on no toes, you know what I'm saying? But, mm -hmm. hey, you know, we just being honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so um, for everybody that don't know, you don't know about future episodes that I've probably written or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, all you know of what we have shot so far and maybe things that you have read. Going into the future, without knowing what's gonna come up next, where do you see Detective Michaels going from here? What would you like to see happen with Detective Michaels? Oh, the, you know, the opportunities and the options are endless, you know. Um, I could see myself going back, you know, seeing Ms. Davis, you know. Okay. Ms. Davis had a nice crib, you know, diamond. There's, uh, I feel like, you know, to see a guy like who's, you know, maybe might, might be labeled a racist per se, you know, and, and maybe he's, you know, having, you know, he's coming on to diamond like that. It's like, well, if you're a racist, why, why you, or if you don't like black people, then why are you, you know, grabbing, grabbing diamond the way you are, you know, or talking to, you know, to Ms. Davis the way you are. I, I could see, you know, like uh, Detective Michaels, like say that'd be funny, right? Like you see him and he's got a place in the in the hood, you know, he's living <laughs> in the hood. 
he's got a black, you know, his, his girl's a, a black girl, you know, maybe he's with, <laughs> maybe he's married to a black girl or something that like that. That would throw you know? people off. That would <laughs> definitely, <laughs> be like, how is this dude this crazy? And he got a, a, a black woman at home with a mixed son. Like, yeah. Um, that would be crazy. That would be very crazy. But you never know. That that's would, why I'm asking this question because you just don't know. People do not. I know. could see him. I could see him taking heat from uh, you know McKay. Yeah, yeah. You know McKay is definitely a worthy adversary who's trying to you know put me on blast, yeah. trying to take me down. Definitely. You know, definitely. I, there's definitely going to be fireworks as far as me and him are concerned. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. There's going to be that, you know, so who, whoever comes out of that as the winner is going to prove to, you know, move up higher. Yeah. He could uh, he could say the wrong thing to the wrong person, you know, all these bloods out in the streets uh -huh. Uh -huh. and whatnot, you know. Um, you know, that, that reminds me of this story. Uh, I used to play ball up over here at West Adams. Okay. And uh, I show up to play at the street ball and I'm, I'm with a buddy of mine. And it was like a bloods convention out there, man. Like yeah, there must have yeah. been a hundred, a couple hundred bloods out there, like a, one of their quarter chapter meetings or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I show I know, up to I know play exactly ball. Where you at. I know exactly where you was at. Continue. I show up to play ball in some blue damn shorts, man. Oh. <laughs> and wow. then I come out. And we started balling with them. No, nobody, you know, said nothing. They they was tugging on my show. That's the wrong color, blood. Yeah. yeah but um, yeah. we start balling out, and I'm hitting game winners. I, I won like three games in a row, and I start talking shit. You know, I'm just you know regular you know basketball trash talk. And my boy was telling me, hey, 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 uh, you know, tone it down a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. I gotta say, all them bloods was really cool. They didn't give me no, they didn't give me no problems or anything like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know exactly. You was over there in the twenties. Those are Fruit Town Browns. I know exactly where you was at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. it's like West Adams and uh, what's that, Arlington. Yep, 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 yep. That my, that my, court my, over my, there. My, my best friend I grew up with is from over there. That's that's how I knew it right off the bat. So you over there by the twenties, all really cool. If you know them, really cool guys, man. But, you know, I can see you probably went over there respectful. And as long as you're going over there respectful, you get what I'm saying? That's one thing I want people to know. If you're respectful and you're not disrespecting and things like that. Nice. People are cool, you know? Yeah. But if you come over there, yeah, and you show any type of disrespect. and you Mouthing come off. Trying to, yeah, mouthing off and things like that. Of course. It, it's, you know, it, it's not a place to play. It's not a place to play around and play games, you know. But if you come over there and you do it the right, you you do it the right way. Really cool, really cool cats, man. So if Me Michaels, too. you know, maybe Michaels might say the wrong thing, you know, uh, you know, with the city as far as the city's concerned, you know, Smoke's got some got some, you know, uh, some drama he's gonna have to deal with here in the upcoming episodes. That's why I say you gotta stay tuned. Cause it's yeah. a lot coming when it comes down to the city. <laughs> smoke, on. smoke done fucked up. Much. You don't want to give too much. <laughs> smoke fucked up bad, and now he's gonna, you know, he might have to pay the price. And um, <laughs> and um, he messed up, huh? Smoke messed up. Smokes, you know, these these higher, uh, you know, bloods that are, you know, the top dogs in in the game. You know, something bad could happen to Mike. I could see something really bad happening to Michaels if he wants to come in and start mouthing off and saying the wrong things to the the wrong, you know, leaders. Yeah, yeah. They, they so, might try to make an example out of me, you know. Yeah, yeah. But we don't uh, want to give up too much, you know. So, you know, we want people to go and watch it. Keep up with what's going on. It's a lot of action. And you got to see what's going on right now when it comes down to the show. So, yeah. outside of that, man, um... Tell everybody what's going on with you during the quarantine right now. How are you living this crazy quarantine life, man, with, with everything that's going on? Just trying to make the best of it, you know. Uh, yeah. I've been sleeping uh, uh, real late. You know, I woke up at 3 p.m. today. You know, uh, <laughs> okay. <I> know. okay. <laughs> if I don't get my 12 hours a night, man, don't even talk to me. Yeah. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of weird. You know, I, I was out in Florida. I was in Miami for uh, January, February, and March. Okay. And right when the lockdown happened, I, I got back here. And I've just – I, I might have left the crib five times. 
You know, uh, I've, I've been staying in this little box of mine uh, here in downtown, and um, okay. hopefully I'm not trying to catch this stuff, you know. I, I, I eat plant-based, so yeah, I feel yeah. like these, you know, uh, meat-borne contagions, not gonna, oh, I'm not good. a suitable host. You healthy. You good, man. You know? You but good. at the same time, you know, trying to wear my mask and you have uh, to. You have to. do the right things um, and just w try to wait it out. You know, uh, I'm eating yeah. good. I, I got the, the fridge uh, packed up. That's I got cool. this little exercise uh, equipment over here. I call it the hump machine. It's like basically okay. like a humping motion. I'm just trying to hump my problems away. I'm trying to hump all my problems away, man. No, no, missus. Do 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 Kyle Williams, aka Detective Michael, got a missus? Yeah, man. Yeah, okay. I got a good girl at the house. Uh, you know, she's uh, she's a scientist at UCLA. Nice. And I nice. guess she's deemed an essential worker, and uh, nice. she's 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 still been working. Okay. And um, yeah, she she comes up here, and takes real good care of me. Nice. Uh, her nice. name's nice. Shirley. God bless you. I love her. Hey, man, shout out to Shirley, man. Shout out to Shirley, man. <laughs> but she, uh, you know, other than that, though, I mean, I, I'm getting bored to death, Paul. You know, yeah, I'm I uh, I hear you. bored out of my mind. But, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. what it is, what it is. Uh, it seems like it, they make it seem like it's going to open back up here in the next week or so. Yeah, they working on it. They working on it. And as soon as you do, man, I got some stuff planned, man. You know, we got to get back to work. We got to keep giving people these amazing episodes. You know what I'm saying? Automatic. Yeah, yeah. Automatic, yeah, man. Yeah. So, so for people, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you, Kyle, man. Um, man, this was amazing. You know, I was I was very excited to do an interview, a live one with you, man, and uh, just just catch up because you know, with everything going on, I haven't really talked to you in a while, but it was just a pleasure, man, to just you know chop it up with you and have a good time. Absolutely, man. Uh, hey, the feelings are mutual. Yeah. All those peeps out there, check out the city. Um, episodes one, two, and three. Kyle yeah. Williams, Detective Michaels, check me out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, before we leave, let everybody know because we we got to pump up your Instagram, man. I saw you got like one picture on there, man. So so let <laughs> so, so let people always ask know. me about my social media. Yeah, you know, I, I'll be like, I got banned from social media. <laughs> Which of course, oh why, why? Uh, too many dick pics. <laughs> So they banned me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I just hadn't got on uh, the social medias. I, I just started up with this Instagram a few months ago when I was in Miami. And uh, okay. this is my first live joint right here. Uh, okay. okay. Um, bless my heart, you know. Uh, I'm just slow Man. on my roll when it comes to the social medias. I know. It's like, it's all, say, it's what? All you got, good. It's all you got good. one post with one photo and... Uh, <laughs> Eight followers, <laughs> following awesome. one, you know, uh, I don't get on here that much, it's not as much as I should, but man, uh, it's amazing how Instagram has evolved and how the social media game has evolved, and uh, yes, yes, thanks yes. for putting me on blast, I gotta up my game in that regard. Hey, man, it's all good, it's all good, but for people who are looking for you, let them know where they can find you, man, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> wherever. Uh, you can find me at kylewilliams.tv. I, I say check me out on IMDb. That's got all the current projects I'm working on. You know, imdb.com, plug in Kyle Williams in the search engine. You see all the stuff that I've done. You see the stuff that I'm working on. And, uh, yeah, just uh, and stay on your, on your TV screens. You'll see me soon enough. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Kyle, man. Well, again, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. Uh, hey, have a good rest of your day, man. I know this Quarantine life is crazy, man, but, uh, yeah, we're going to pull through it. All right, Paul. Good looking out, man. Great talking to you, man. All right. Great talking to you, too, Kyle. Later. All right, buddy. Later. See you. See you. All right, everybody. So I hope you all enjoyed the interview. Again, please go check out the city at paulplocketproductions.com and subscribe and watch episodes one, two, and three. I see y'all coming in. I am Bossy J. Y'all coming in late. Y'all missed the whole interview. I'm going to still wave, but y'all missed the whole thing. So if y'all missed the interview, I want y'all to go and watch it from the beginning. And please go watch the, up the upcoming episodes, one, two, and three. And four will be coming in like three weeks. I love you all. If you did not see the interview, please go watch it. Kyle was dope. I told you all. All right? Deuces. <laughs>